Welcome to a farmer's breakfast show right here from County 034. It's a brilliant day and it is so wonderful to be back here in studio. I know you've been seeing us in, out, on, off, but now we are back bigger and better. This is your host, Noana Siali Kadima, and today we are going to talk about some very interesting topic, a crop that we rarely talk about, a crop that has been uh, used uh, in different ways, but today we'll talk about the healthy benefits of the crop, not only to the human body, but most importantly to our soils. This is a farmer's breakfast show, and we request you to continue following us, continue to follow us on our social uh, media platforms on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, and even on TikTok. We want to make sure that you as a farmer, you who is interested in farming, can get the best out of what we are doing. But before we jump into that, we have been seeing some very interesting news. And uh, some of the news that we would like to just to bring out is just the fact that the current administration under the, under the guidance of President William Ruto has taken it up to make sure that this cooperatives movement so uh, has actually is actually being strengthened it is something that has been there it was there a while back where the farmer cooperatives were really supporting farmers you know they were talking to farmers they were making sure that farmers get the best inputs the best resources at the most affordable rates but also the markets in terms of marketing the agricultural produce we have seen some that are still in in, in place but smaller in in sizes but now we, we have seen that there's a lot of support coming up where the, the, the government has said that it's going to strengthen the cooperative movements, cooperative societies, so that can be able to help this, uh, these farmers as well. The other one is uh, a very interesting thing that I saw in Georgia, that uh, they're now digitizing cows. We'll share some of these stories. And then uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization has actually re-elected uh, Dong Yu as uh, as the director general, and it's really interesting to see that uh, what what he started off, what some of the policies that he has been uh, pushing forward and making sure that being implemented across the world uh, could be the reason why that has happened. One um, one very interesting governor, one very interesting governor has really impressed me with some of uh, what has been in the news of late. This is the Transoya governor, uh, who has actually made sure that. They're going to set up in Transoya. It's actually Trans Queens and Kings Poultry Farmers Cooperative Society. Very interesting. That's the longest cooperative society name I've seen. They're actually having uh, investing in a state of the art ch chicken slaughter facility. <laughs> yeah, I would say where that comes from. But anyway, there's also another interesting uh, recommendation that we're actually receiving as farmers. And it's being led actually in uh, in Yandarua, in Yandarua County, which is really famous for 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 farming. Uh, is 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 actually bringing something very interesting, and they're urging farmers to do a crop diversification, and they're doing this as a campaign. It's actually being led by by the the, the county governor. Uh, <laughs> he has a very interesting name. Uh, he's called Kiarie Badilisha. Yes, so he's transforming his Badilisha in Badilisha system but but what is saying that we can keep on growing what we grow but we need to regenerate our soils and that is one of the reasons why we'll be discussing the role of beans in regenerating our soil so he's saying that he's going to lead a campaign where as farmers are growing uh, pot, uh avocados which is really farmers in the region they can also continue growing uh, uh f i mean uh, potatoes which is also a very strong pro product from uh, from the county so one of the things that he's saying is that he, we have to make sure that uh, there's a crop diversification. So you diversify crop rotation and stuff like that. Another reason why we'll be discussing that as well. Uh, something else that uh, also is interesting and in, in the same line, web line with the cooperative movements is that the climate change is actually being implemented at cooperative level. So farmers are being trained on climate smart agriculture. This is very interesting. Again, this is a farmer's breakfast show, and we are glad. I am so excited to be back here. I was I, I was here uh, almost 30 minutes before my time to be here today. Uh, now, there's something else that I'd like to, uh, to bring out. 
just in the news as well, uh, this is courtesy of kilimonews.co.ke, you should actually watch that, is that apart from honey, by the way, apart from honey that we are always talking about and all that and putting in our teeth and stuff like that, there's another pro byproduct that actually makes more money for, for beekeepers. That is propolis. Propolis. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we'll share some of these uh, details. And then um, there's another interesting, very interesting thing by <laughs> a fellow radio presenter who said that uh, farming is a scam. Very interesting. I've always said that farming is not for everyone. Just like marriage is not for everyone. Very interesting. Anyway, that is what is in the news. We'll be giving you some more highlights tomorrow in what is happening in agriculture. This is the Farmer's Breakfast Show. And as we start the day, we have seen that the weather patterns is crazy. The cold, 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 cold is crazy. And this is now time probably for me to share with you what are some of the weather patterns. And I hope our producer has some of this chat. It was a very interesting chat. We're going to talk about close to 15 different towns in Kenya, different counties in Kenya. And we want to just ask ourselves, what is happening? Is it the same weather patterns? We are seeing a shift in weather patterns, especially in the coastal regions. Um, where we are, they're actually uh, saying that for the first time in a very long time, which is something that I've witnessed as well, they are going to harvest maize, which is really very, very interesting, positively. But what is the impact of that? And why, why has that changed? So we will start with our great county of uh, Nairobi. Yes, uh, so Nairobi, I've been told today there was some, some, some rains, uh, so the, uh, the temperatures are 14, uh, lows of 14 and highs of 20. We see Kisumu has rainy intervals, highs of 28 and lows of 18. Uh, something very interesting also here is uh, Marsabit, as usual. However, Marsabit has cooled down from 36, 33 to 22, highs of 22 and lows of 14. It also rained really well uh, the past few, 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 few months. And then uh, we go down into Malindi. Something really unheard of, Malindi. Sunny intervals, showers, that is Kilifi County. We're seeing Mombasa County also having the same. Lamu is also having the same. So if you're growing uh, watermelon now, and farmers in Lamu have grown watermelon, uh, you had better sell before they bring it to the market. Their watermelon is very sweet. When they have water, the size increases. It's huge, 14, 15 kilos of watermelon. The other thing very interesting is Voy. Voy has cloudy, sunny intervals, highs of 26, lows of 17. Technically, the, low, the, 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 the coastal region has really cooled down, really good rains, and really inconveniencing. I was talking to a friend who is Mombasa. Like she's, she's not enjoying the coastal coastal town anymore because it is raining a lot and like that you know we carry different clothes when you go to Mombasa and then Moyale, Ker Moyale, uh, Lodua, Marsabit, Garissa really really good weather and I love this weather because one of the things that this weather is basically it's actually very nice for farming if you are practicing farming and you get kind of this kind of weather it's really different from what was there a while back some four four three four months back it was even sad to, to read some of the news, uh, the, the weather forecast, because it was really crazy for farmers. We saw farmers losing a lot. But again, that is what we as farmers, and, and most importantly, we here at our Farmers Media, we want you to be able to understand what is climate smart agriculture, what, how can you, you know, practice, uh, adopt climate smart agriculture practices. And this way, then you can be able to cushion yourself, you can be able to protect yourself, your crops, your farm, uh, despite the climate changes. Again, uh, it's very imp important as we do all this, we have to make sure that we are getting, the, getting it right, getting it right all the time. Now, 
Uh, I'm excited about this topic. However, I want first of all to look at some things that that uh, would be interesting. Uh, just giving a few highlights of what is happening. What what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about beans, 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 beans. But there are two ways. That there are two things that we'll actually focus on. And the first one is the importance of bees, beans in agriculture. But I want to refresh that and say, what is the role? What does you as a farmer, what does beans, what do, when you think about beans, how does it help you? How does it help your soil so that you can be able to get the best out of your soil? Because one of the biggest challenges that we see, especially when we look at uh, having discussed with quite a number of farmers, is just the fact that nitrogen levels are so low in our soils. Sometimes we get very low nitrogen levels. And this hinders the other elements, the other nutrients from penetrating from the soil all the way to the plants. And we know nitrogen is a key component, especially when it comes to production of, of food and vegetables, plants, things like maize. You know, uh, nitrogen is a very important uh, part. Remember, we have a whole month in any crop or two months, depending on the crop that you're growing, that focuses on nitrogen. That is the vegetative stage, the green matter. For those who don't know and that is why uh, during top dressing we're always saying let us do what in when you're doing top dressing we say let us add cn you know let us add some uh, uh, cn to help the crop uh, to be able to uh, develop faster you know after having some phosphorus levels when you're starting off how do you boost the crop you know uh, and, and we've seen that and uh, my, my colleague will be talking about maize and we'll see the importance of nitrogen especially things like, uh, what is it called, things like maize, you know. It's very important to understand this role, and, and, and that is why we are going to talk about beans. I was given this topic. I was not prepared to talk about beans. I'm not one of the best uh, bean farmers. But this last season, I diversified and actually planted beans for the first time in like three years, you know. And the yield was really good. I just, I didn't get certified seeds on time. So what I did is that because I'm not I'm not interested so much in planting beans, but I'm going to do it next, because I didn't see the importance of it. I thought the yield will not be as good. I wasn't sure. I've tested my soil, but I wasn't sure because I'd not, never done it before. But I was very surprised. Out of one and a half acres, I managed to harvest twelve bags. No, yeah, twelve bags of beans. That is very good. Anything that I've planted where I planted the beans is a totally different thing. However, beans belong to the legume family. So things like cowpeas, kunde, that's kunde for those who know better. Um, it's a very interesting crop. So there are five things that we look at. Uh, so that is the soil health, crop rotation, things like improving the soil structure, interplanting and, uh, and, and, and companion planting. With this, we will share later on an image of what we call three sisters. So what? who are these three sisters and why, why is it important to remember the three sisters in relation to beans? Um, we'll also look at the nitrogen fixation, as we've just mentioned, the organic matter, the cover cropping, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the crop rotation, soil enrichment, and we'll see why this particular crop we're talking about called beans is very important. Again, this is a farmer's breakfast show. Remember, this is where you... As you can see behind me, connect, learn, and grow. This is your host, Noana Sel Kadima. We'll be taking a very short break. And when we come back, we dive into the discussion of the importance of bees in regenerative agriculture. Have you felt that the climate has been changing? Perhaps the dry season seems hotter, the rains are too late, or too early, too little, or don't come at all. You see more pests and diseases on your shamba. All of these can lead to less yields. By managing your water and soil, 
you can ensure that your shamba is still productive. This could be as simple as harvesting water from your roofs, investing in solar irrigation, and practicing conservation agriculture such as mulching, crop rotation, and minimum tillage. Trees are also a part of smart farming and can help you make your farm cooler, keep your soils intact and healthy. Planting for the crops and turning grasses into hay or silage is another smart way of adapting. But be aware that even with smart farming, some things will remain out of your control. That's why it's a good idea to think about insurance as this can cover you from these unforeseen events. Good soil and water management, along with planting trees and pest and disease control, can also help you increase your yields and income as the climate changes. Conservation agriculture is a way of farming that keeps nutrients and moisture in your soil. It's also a good way of controlling pests and diseases. The three main principles are minimum tillage, mulching and crop rotation. With minimum tillage, you only disturb the soil where you will be planting. You can do this with a reaper or using a djembe. The second principle is called mulching. This means that you cover your soil with leftover residues such as leaves or maize stovers. This protects your soil from the hot sun while holding moisture in the ground. The mulch material will break down and add nutrients to your soil. Crop rotation is the third principle. You shouldn't plant the same crop on the same piece of land year after year. Instead, rotate between different crop families each season. If you follow these simple principles, you can be certain of healthier soil and higher yields in the long run. Welcome back to a farmer's breakfast show. I was actually just reading <laughs> something very interesting here. And uh, I will share this as uh, it says, somebody has just shared this with me. If you're going to dare greatly, you're going to get kicked at some point. If you choose courage, you will absolutely know failure, disappointment, setback, and even heartbreak. That's why we call it courage. That's why it's so rare. Very interesting. And I've practiced this and I've seen this so many times, especially here in agriculture, here in farming. And uh, anyway, what I'm doing is a big story. Anyway, as we have seen uh, during the break, we have actually seen the importance of uh, intercropping, the importance of cover crops in conservation agriculture. But the very important thing here to note is the fact that this is information that is readily available. This is information that smallholder farmers can be able to get because it's credible, it's reliable, and it's unbiased. This is message about climate smart agriculture that has been brought to you by Sprout Learning, which is an open platform, uh, content platform for farmers to be able to benefit for you who is going to train farmers especially on the topic of climate smart agriculture the practices how to adopt what are these basic things that we need to do so make sure that you follow that up but also uh check out the uh, the in the comment section you can check out the link to some of these videos the youtube channel that you can get this and so much more information again this is the farmer's breakfast show and as we get in, we first want to ask ourselves, what does soil health mean? You know, when you eat beans, there's a lot that you get out of it. 
I was just uh, looking at something <laughs> very interesting. So when you eat beans, uh, you get you get a lot. You get nutrients. You know, you get uh, all these benefits that that come to your body. It rich in iron. You know, the different types of beans uh, that 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 are actually helping uh, and and help the body. You know, beans are rich in iron. They are rich in zinc, magnesium, potassium. And 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 all and vitamins. The other thing that is also very good in fiber, you know, is actually plant-based protein and fiber and vitamins. But also, there's something very interesting about beans to the human health. So, the phytochemicals that are in the beans makes them a valuable component of a balanced diet. That is why. Yes, you get flatulence when you eat beans, but you don't get bloated. Ever thought about it? It's a very key component, you know. It, it helps in the human body. But now, how it helps the human body is also very interesting because that is also how it helps the soil. You know what fiber does to the body? Protein, you know, uh, what it does to the body. Yes, I don't have... I wouldn't be able to talk about... Um, about the human body in in a biological uh, uh, way however the fiber in the body helps in the digestive system the folate and vitamins especially vitamin b c six is actually very important for the blood you know but just as we see the importance of it in the human body which is very crucial we also see it and know what beans does especially in what we're discussing about regenerative agriculture, all this is a to- is all these are topics: conservation agriculture, you know, soil test, soil management, soil fertility. All this comes in and culminates into soil health. So this is the climate smart agriculture practices that we need to adopt as smallholder farmers across the global south. And uh, this is very important, key, especially in Kenya here, as we discuss about availability of food. You know, this is something that we have. We might not have talked about, you know, and which we want to start this discussion. And that is why um, I said yes. However much I am not one of the best uh, farmers planting beans, I would love to talk about this. I've done some uh, research, not really extensive, but really good research, uh, to get just to know what this looks like. So we'll dive into the discussion right, right, right away. Uh, but I'm being told that there is. Uh, uh, traffic updates again as we look at these traffic updates we also want to uh, remember our beloved countrymen and women who perished over the the weekend last week in uh, in a grisly road accident so we want to remember them and we wish them uh, their their families uh, sincere condolences and we hope that in the resurrection hope that we have we will they will be remembered and it is really sad but we also urge them and uh, if you are a trader i've seen that so much along that route uh, you can know, now know where i come from along that route we've seen so many traders you know putting their wares putting the, food, the the produce on the on the roads it is really dangerous and uh, i know uh, uh, the cs of Agri- of uh, transport, like Kipchumba Mulkram and say that they're looking into ways of how they can be able to reduce that. Uh, I have always wondered why don't the traders use the markets that have been built? We have so many ghost markets that have been constructed, uh, but the traders don't use them. They're on the roads. You know, is it because of quick, uh, quick, quick access to to the, the people who are buying? Again, uh, our condolences to their families, and we hope that uh, God will strengthen them during this time. So, uh, Mathri route, courtesy of Mathri route. Sorry, the traffic update, uh, courtesy of Mathri route. Uh, we see in um, on Thika Road, uh, traffic starts at drive in. I think they should just have returned to the drive in cinema so that people can park there, watch movies before they go to work. Uh, it's always a mess on, on, on Thika Road. I always hear when someone tells me to come to Thika Road, I want to go. But Thika Road can get traffic at any time, you know, especially there near. Yeah, what is it called? Uh, Mudaiga area, you know, that all that route, uh, all sorts area is a t- terrible mess. And uh, then a uh, lot of traffic along Jujia Road, it's bumper to bumper. That's where that and there's slow movement towards uh, Pangani Police Station. Um, 
Uh, someone else, Maureen Akenyi says, avoid Jujaro at all costs. Ni kama gari zote za gizurai ya mbakasi na kasarani zimehamia huku. <laughs> Jump from Moy Forces Academy. That is crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, very interesting uh, image that we're seeing there about Shambhala Mawe. Somebody jumping on top of a, of, a, <laughs> of a lorry and taking up something. Inbound traffic on Waiyaki Way all the way before Safaricom. Uh, Absa area, Safaricom House Absa area is terrible. Moving at snail speed. Another standstill at Koja roundabout. Slow movement entering town. And then uh, Waziri, 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 Fred Machuki says, uh, not, a, not a CS. Uh, he's just called that. Um, urging people when they finish smoking, they they should not throw the butt outside. Um, uh, very interesting, very interesting. So we have that as updates. We'll keep be, keep you informed uh, as well. Uh, uh, we'll be told also to watch out. Um, <laughs> uh, these ones are just for my eyes. Fantastic. That was a, a farmer's breakfast. Uh, a farmer's breakfast show traffic update. So let's dive into the discussion. I know that you're, you're really waiting for this. So soil health. So soil health is the ability of soil to be able to have all the nutrients at optimum levels to help you as a farmer grow crops and get the best yield. One key component of that is nitrogen. The ability of your soil to fix to refix its own nitrogen is very important. And that is where, as we start this discussion about bees, it is very important to note that beans belong to the legume family. And since they belong to the legume family, it is important to know that then they are natural, they have the ability to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere into a usable form. Imagine, imagine if you can attract nitrogen. Hey. <laughs> so what beans do is that they can be able to capture, to fix nitrogen that is in the atmosphere. Just, you know, like on your farm and stuff like that into a usable form that now enriches the soil with this essential, with this essential, um, what is it called, this essential nutrient. So what that does, then it helps you as a farmer reduce your cost. How? Because then, remember, we, as we were discussing earlier, nitrogen is a key component in plant growth. And you, you normally use uh, top dressing, you know, CN, urea, stuff like that. Uh, sometimes we use nitrable from Yara, which is brilliant fertilizer um, to be able to get that nitrogen component in our soils so that our crops can process the food uh, the other nutrients can penetrate faster so what when you get nitrogen fixation from beans or the legume family i also like, love kunde because i just approved uh, is the fact that now you reduce the cost of using synthetic fertilizers so when you reduce the cost of synthetic fertilizers you reduce your cost definitely fertilizer cost of skyrocketed and that promotes sustainable agricultural practices which we also call climate smart agricultural practices brilliant so that is a very interesting component so beans so what i do is which i'll be doing now next uh, again what i do is where i'm going to plant onions when i put my onions in the nursery i normally plant kunde for two main reasons. Nitrogen fixation, as we have seen, the legume family. The other one is that it's a quick crop, 45 days out in the market. The place that I was going to plant uh, onions will be healthy. Nitrogen has been fixed. Remember, onions require a lot of nitrogen. And then I also get some money to help me with the onion crop. So that it does two things, uh, money-wise, health-wise for the soil. So another thing, another uh, reason why you need to grow uh, an importance of uh, of beans is crop rotation. Remember, anything that you're doing on your soil requires you to change, you know, to change the crop. Remember, uh, you cannot just plant one sim simple, <coughs> one same, we cannot plant just a, the same crop over and over, you know, so we need to change. And it's only, only, only healthy for the soil if you change to something that is friendlier to the soil. Something we've seen, it captures the, the nitrogen in the atmosphere and fix it in the soil. So that is one very important reason. The other <clears throat> important reason that soil, that beans play an important part, we've talked about soil health, but I want us to please allow me to dive in a bit deeper and talk about the improvement 
of the soil structure. So these are two things. The soil structure and the soil health are a bit different. The human body, the physique, the shape. Is, is shape part of No. Let's talk about the physique. <laughs> but physics is also shape. Anyway. Um, the soil structure is like the physique. Soil health is now the healthy. So you can be a big person, a small person, whatever you are, but not healthy. So those are two components. So what does improving soil structure mean? So if you look at the the beans, I just wish I had a picture of beans, the roots. So the, the roots of beans have some nodules, some small, you know, small brown things in the soil, in the in the in the roots. So those are called house nitrogen fixing bacteria so why is the nitrogen fixing bacteria important this is remember as we learned i think in school there's harmful bacteria and uh, dangerous bacteria so what this does is that it adds organic matter to the soil so those nodules remember when you harvest you are protein the beans they remain in the soil so what these do is that they improve the structure how? By enhancing its ability to retain water. That's why sometimes you plant beans, it takes, it, the rain might dis disappear, but you'll still harvest beans. You know, so, so that's some, some, something interesting. So these nodules, this bacteria is important in making sure that the soil retains its, its it gets the ability to retain water. That way it helps improve drainage because you don't get run of water and also prevents Erosion. So you see, that's that's a very in interesting component. So component number one, soil health, fantastic. Crop rotation. But now the next one that you've seen is the soil structure. So soil structure, you see like the way you, um, how do I put it? Like how the soil is. It is either healthy and strong. It's healthy, but also have the ability of holding water, retaining water. So that in case there's a drought, in case there's a uh, rains are fail or your irrigation system has, has something has happened you can actually reduce that the other one is uh the three sisters i don't know if our producer has the image of the three sisters and uh, this image of the three sisters is a very interesting image because what it does is that it talks about um very 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 interestingly it talks about <laughs> the three crops that that uh, it, was a, it was a theory behind it, but made a lot of sense, where you plant beans, you plant maize, and then you plant squash. Squash would be cogets uh, in, our, in, our, in our English. So what it does is that the, the, the maize it goes up, as we know, and the beans, so specific beans, this would be the climbing beans. So the climbing beans would be able to, to climb on top of the maize, around the maize. You know? So the maize is, 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 is using the... Uh, sorry, the, the beans is using the maize as a way of going up, uh, like holding it. Then the squash should provide now the, the what is it called, the cover, cover crop, you know. Why was this important? The, it was important because the pollen from the maize would be able to help the pollination of the squash or the scorchets. Some, some people were asking me, why not plant uh, uh, butternut? I'll try that and I'll, I'll tell you guys the impact. And then because of evaporation, loss of water or stuff like that, the squash would actually act as, actually squash, sorry, squash is butternut, would act as a cover crop, meaning it's like mulching. So it acts like mulching. So you plant three crops, same, same place, three different harvests, all of them fantastic. I want to try that in my farm in the next few weeks. In fact, behind the studio here, there's a farm. I will ask for permission and we can do two lines and then oh, three sisters. Very interesting. But now, when we, we when we discuss this, what are we talking about? Because they're not all the types of beans that can do that. So after the next break, we'll talk about the types of beans. So what else? Um, I want us to dive in deeper a bit into the nitrogen fixation. So what what is the next thing that we can talk about beans and why it is important to actually have beans? This is big because they're leguminous. You know, the characteristics of leguminous is that they have bacteria. So the nitrogen fixation bacteria is not just a bacteria. It is called rhizobia. 
rhizobia. I think I'll ask this question on Friday. What is the nitrogen fixation bacteria called? Rhizobia. So these ones come from the roots. So when they come from the roots, what happens is that <clears throat> it converts atmospheric nitrogen, as we've seen. But now we're diving in deeper. You know, the way you do chemistry 101, then there's chemistry 303, you know, stuff like that. So what is this nitrogen fixation? How, what happens? Um, this process is called nitrogen fixation. But this bacteria is very important because with... <laughs> So this bacteria, what it helps again, is it provide from provides food for the soil organisms. Yes. So what it does is that it provides food for the microorganisms in the body, in the soil. Sorry, in the soil structure. Which are some of these? Some of these. So these are things like earthworms. Yes. I'll do. I'll take that again. So. Bacteria have this uh, ability. Uh, they have this nitrogen-fixing bacteria that is called rhizobia. So this rhizobia, what it does is that it, it provides organic matter and improves soil structure, you know, water holding capacity as we've seen, nutrition retention. But something very critical. Remember we have some, in, some pests in the soil that are healthy. So this rhizobia is beneficial to soil organisms that helps the soil, like earthworms, you know, like other micro beneficial microbes that are there. And this helps in the nit nitrogen fixation. It helps in the soil, improving the soil structure, and eventually it helps in the soil health. And once your soil health is improved, it then means that you, with all other factors constant, then what do you have? You have better yields, and if you match that together with a good market, then you have Pesam Fuconi. Very interesting. Okay? So you can actually see that, and it's a very critical bit of it. Yes, again, uh, it was not meant to be a science lesson, but it is a very interesting thing that we talk about beans, and some farmers are like, it's not profitable. But today we said, let's let's discuss about this. Let's dive into the discussion. Let's see what is happening. And we ask you to, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, post in the comment section. Let us see what you have. Uh, I'll be reviewing some in, the, in, 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 in a few minutes. But before that, uh, we have something very interesting here. Uh, now, we've talked about soil health, all those things, but we've not talked about the organic matter. So what is organic matter? So... Everything that we're discussing is about soil health. I know I don't, want to, I don't want it to be confusing. Everything we're discussing is about soil health. And we talk about soil health, we talk about other very important things that we've not mentioned here now. Sorry. And these are... Uh, <coughs> yes. And these are things like organic matter, cover cropping, and <coughs> which are very critical. Uh, allow me to take a short break. And when we come back, we want to review some of your comments on the social media platforms. Apart from that, we also want uh, to see the final bit of what is organic matter? You know, what does it look like? Which are the varieties of beans planted in Kenya? You know, what are the conditions necessary for you to plant beans? And uh, most importantly, how does that affect your pocket? This is the Farmer's Breakfast Show. We'll be right back. Have you felt that the climate has been changing? Perhaps the dry season seems hotter, the rains are too late, or too early, too little, or don't come at all. You see more pests and diseases on your shamba. All of this can lead to less yields. By managing your water and soil, 
you can ensure that your shamba is still productive. This could be as simple as harvesting water from your roofs, investing in solar irrigation, and practicing conservation agriculture such as mulching, crop rotation, and minimum tillage. Trees are also a part of smart farming and can help you make your farm cooler, keep your soils intact and healthy. Planting fodder crops and turning grasses into hay or silage is another smart way of adapting. But be aware that even with smart farming, some things will remain out of your control. That's why it's a good idea to think about insurance, as this can cover you from these unforeseen events. Good soil and water management, along with planting trees and pest and disease control, can also help you increase your yields and income as the climate changes. Conservation agriculture is a way of farming that keeps nutrients and moisture in your soil. It's also a good way of controlling pests and diseases. The three main principles are minimum tillage, mulching and crop rotation. With minimum tillage, you only disturb the soil where you will be planting. You can do this with a reaper or using a djembe. The second principle is called mulching. This means that you cover your soil with leftover residues such as leaves or maize stovers. This protects your soil from the hot sun while holding moisture in the ground. The mulch material will break down and add nutrients to your soil. Crop rotation is the third principle. You shouldn't plant the same crop on the same piece of land year after year. Instead, rotate between different crop families each season. If you follow these simple principles, you can be certain of healthier soil and higher yields in the long run. Thank you. Welcome back again to A Farmer's Breakfast Show right here on County 034. It's a chilly, chilly, chilly and cold morning right here in County 034. However, we are grateful that, yes, despite the rain that came, at least we are, uh, are going to harvest something. And one of the things that we'll be harvesting, I have already done my harvest. I will be sharing some of the pictures in the comment section as well, uh, is beans. And uh, this I've seen very important and as we say that after the break, we will be uh, going through some of the comments on our platforms. Uh, we'll jump into that right away and uh, look at what uh, some of the comments that are there. A very interesting question that has been asked here by a good friend of mine called uh, Patrick Kiyoko. Uh, Patrick Kiyoko say, asks, uh, uh, there's a question that I have seen here. Uh, very interesting question, yes. Uh, what is the difference between root nodules and nematodes in legume? This confuses most farmers I meet daily in my farm visits. Very interesting question, uh, uh, Patrick. We are glad that you've watched. That's a very good question. So there are two things uh, we have to differentiate. Again, they look almost the same. Sometimes they, have, they get confusing. I also used to confuse that a while. But so these are the root nodules and nematodes. These two things are very different. They interact very distinctly with, with the legume plants. So the nodules are structured that, are, are, how do I put it? So this, the root nodules have been structured in a way to form on the roots of the legume plants which causes a symbiotic relationship with the nitrogen fixation. Okay. Uh, I wish I had some images, but we'll share some. So those are what is are known as, so that is what now are known as rhizopia, as we've said. So these are, uh, how can I put it? I'm trying to put it in English. 
it, it, it forms that they are like brownish small balls kind of thing that actually form on the on the roots of the of the, the plant of the legume plants which are as we have seen nitrogen fixation bacteria which is called rhizopia so what happens is that the legume plant it's, it's a it's a beneficial it's a mutual beneficial thing the legume plant provides uh, rhizobia with carbohydrates and a protected environment so it is inside that ball there while at the same time they convert atmospheric nitrogen into a form that can be used in the soil so that one it makes it something i can say something really nice because it helps both the plant benefits and the soil also benefits at the same time whereas nematodes i don't even like the word nematodes i don't even like hearing that nematodes word because i've seen farmers that have really suffered because of nematodes it's actually one of the things that is normally tested during soil testing so what these are, they are very small, microscopic. You can't even see, you might not even see them, by the way. Worms. These are like worms. They're actually worms, microscopic worms in the soil. So what do they do? They damage the crops. Some of them are beneficial. Yes, we don't, just like we've seen the, the bacteria as well. Because they help in feeding the harmful organisms. However, most of the nematodes are parasitic. They are parasites and not can cause. They cause damage to close the whole plants. They cause damage to the roots, to the stems, and to other parts of the plant. You see the difference? So one positive, the root nodules, which, which we, we can call rhizobia for now, which, uh, which which takes atmospheric nitrogen converts it into the soil into 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 nitrogen into nitrogen sorry it takes atmospheric and nitrogen from the air to the form converts it into a form that can be used in the soil hence improving the soil structure soil health better yields on the other hand nematodes they finish the crop majority of them they are like parasites so what happens is that the nematodes attack and feed the legume plants so it attacks and feeds it that's why you find in some areas where they have nematodes infestation in their farms uh chances are they will not even harvest if you plant beans they will not harvest and those are some of the things that are very crucial especially for you as a farmer to be to be able to to have that so patrick thank you very much for that question and 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 again we'll share more about this in, in as, as as we continue so uh as we as we continue as we are going on uh i want us to talk about something that is very interesting uh and and this is actually crop rotation and why is crop rotation important uh especially and why what part do, do beans play when you're doing crop rotation so what happens is that uh what is the importance of first of all crop rotation so crop rotation helps break the infestation of pests and diseases so it breaks down that cycle if for example you had uh, a crop like watermelon and this infestation of the melon fly uh, when you rotate to another crop then the melon fly does not have anything else to feed on chances are they die uh, the different practices that you do in preparation of the land also does that as well the other thing is that um, many pests as we know affect a specific crop that is why you see the change of weather uh you, you it's rarely do apart from the corona area era uh rarely do you get people getting suffering from colds when it's really hot yeah so that's the same thing so you can imagine if it was just cold the whole year then that means very many people would be suffering from cold the same with the, our soils the same with the with, the, with, the, with our soils there are pests that affect specific crops so when you break and you rotate your crop, what happens is that you break the cycle, the infestation, the pest and disease infestation cycle, you break it down. And when you break it, that means that it ceases to, to occur. And that is the reason why it is important. However, there's also an importance of why you need to rotate other crops with beans. So this is a crucial thing. What, what, it ha what, what the beans do is that they help reduce the buildup of specific pests. For example, as we have seen, Melon fly. You've grown, we planted watermelon, and what happens is it 
it uh, gets, gets infestation. There are quite a number of pests and diseases that affect watermelon, you know, from uh, quite a number. I, I mean, we're not seeing that. We're not saying that beans are not affected by pests and diseases. They are. However, they are more beneficial when rotating a crop. Some may argue that it doesn't make sense or it, it's not, it's not uh, uh, good enough. But if you look at it very critically, you find that the beans have a better chance of you, you have a better chance of improving your soil despite not getting a lot in terms of, I mean, you don't get 20 tons in one acre. No. I mean, unless you're David Ndegwa who can actually grow quite a lot. Huh? Uh, I, I, with a lot of knowledge, which I, we we are hoping to have him in the next in the in the following show after after this, uh, you might get probably ten bags of maize of of beans from an acre that is close to ninety kilos. Uh, uh, one bag is around ten thousand, fifteen thousand shillings. No, ten thousand. That's play play fair. Ten thousand. That's a hundred thousand shillings. But you've fixed your soil. You've improved your soil structure. You've uh, uh, gotten rid of all most of the pests and diseases that are in the soil during that time. So it's a win-win. It's a win-win as well. So what does what it does that the, the beans have specific, it, it kills it not kill it helps reduce the uh, specific pests specific and pathogens in the soil. So that is the diseases pathogens like soil and on its own, you harvest beans and you've improved the overall soil structure and soil health. Very interesting. Now, we've talked about soil health, improving soil structure, crop rotation, organic matter, and all that. So now, I want us to look at something very important, uh, which I have not mentioned in, uh, as we st all along through the show. This is soil enrichment what is soil enrichment what is it you know and what is it in relation to growing beans so uh, interesting is that what beans do they help in soil fertility so there's soil health remember but there's also soil fertility so soil health can be fantastic healthy body healthy but not fertile okay so as these beans grow, what they do is that they extract some nutrients from the soil, just like any other crop. But when the beans are harvested or the plants start decomposing, then they start doing something very important. We've seen in the video from Sprout that beans are also used as for mulching uh, and, and eventually organic matter. You know, because beans of what we are discussing now is a very critical point. So let me start that again. So there is soil health, which is fantastic, which is good. But there is soil enrichment. So soil health is the status that the soil is when you're planting a crop and everything grows fantastic. You harvest, yes. But there's soil enrichment. So what does soil enrichment does? What, what is this? So we are seeing that when you're harvesting beans, there is the, res the, the leaves that they, the, once you've harvested, you've harvested the beans, you leave the leaves there. What does that help the soil with? That is now soil enrichment. So what they do is that they, when they start decomposing, when the beans, leave, dried leaves start decomposing, what it does is that it starts releasing back nutrients into the soil. So it starts releasing this, some nutrients back in the soil. And what this does is that now that nutrient is now available for other plants. Good. We're well, good there. So this, it's a natural process. You cannot take it to the lab. You cannot do anything with it. It's a natural process that improves soil fertility and helps you as a farmer because what it does is that it reduces your reliance on synthetic fertilizers exactly so soil enrichment is one of the most important parts of farming it's a very critical uh, aspect especially for you as a farmer to adopt climate smart agricultural practices very very important so as you do this also you make sure that it's very important to know that there are specific beans Again, this is now now we're getting into there that may 
that vary in helping the soil. So not all of it will be like, we'll plant in types of beans and, and all that. No, you also have to make sure that you know which bean variety is good for your region, which bean variety is good for your soil type, which bean variety is good uh, for the market. You know, all this, we're not just farming because we're excited about farming. Sometimes I do that. But what we help, we want to see how does planting beans help in soil health and the, sust and the sustainability of that soil. Remember, we mentioned the last bit of soil enrichment. So now, um, I want us to jump into something very interesting, a very brief one, just to mention a few varieties that that, that we have seen but grow really well in, in Kenya, uh, in Africa. I don't know how, whether some of the names that I will mention. Uh, so these are just legumes that, that, that grow very well in, uh, in our region, uh, mostly sub-Saharan Africa, the region that we have close to arid, semi-arid areas, you know, uh, what, why this is important. Uh, uh, again, uh, on your comments, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I think, yes, yes. But we'll be sharing also more information. Uh, Patrick has mentioned that he's um, happy with some of the knowledge that we have there. Uh, and we we are grateful that we'll be able to share some more information about that. Uh, and, and it is really confusing. And that's the reason why we say beans, today is beans, not how, how to cook beans, no, but there are some beans that you cook and they're not very sweet, but we'll see that. So red kidney beans, fantastic. I don't know if we have the images of the different types of beans up. Uh, I don't know if our producer has that image up. Fantastic. So we have the red kidney beans, red kidney beans, which we also call them as probably njahi, you know, uh, in Kenya, used for stews and soups and salads. If someone did tell you this, I love cooking. I've never cooked beans very properly, but I think I'll start. They, then we have pigeon peas. We have pigeon peas where they're called mbazi. You know, uh, if you go to the coastal towns, that is what you eat in the morning. Green grams, yes. Or they're also known as negu or, uh, or mung beans. Uh, very interesting. Uh, very good. So the mbazis are good with uh, <laughs> uh, with foods like giveri. Um, you can eat them with samosa or mahamris. Then we have cowpeas, kunde, as we all know, uh, one of my best varieties outside the farm. Behind my, I, I always have be, uh, kunde on the farm, always. Just that now we've planted, actually now. We'll be sharing some a video about how we've planted from that to the end to how it goes to the market. Then we have the butter beans, which people call them lima beans or choroko. Uh, so these ones are good uh, for stews, salads, stuff like that. Uh, then we have soya beans. Soya beans really, uh, really important. It's actually a, a, one of the most important cash crops in Kenya. It's normally an alternative where people uh, don't eat meat. There's um, can do soya. We have now seen some soya milk being being uh, sold. Soya soybean oil also is now being uh, processed and sold. Uh, things like tofu. You know, and then we have the haricot beans. So haricot beans are the white beans we normally see. I think you can see them in, in, if, you, if, if we have the image up. That are in soups, stews, salads, stuff like that. Yes. Very interesting discussion. Uh, I was, I was I, when I was told I'll talk about beans, I almost swapped uh, with the next show, which I would love to tell you this. The next show is going to be very interesting. I would have loved to host because I'd have, have many questions, but I'd really be excited to be behind the scenes just to get to hear one of our seniors, one of the experts in the industries, both as a farmer, as an expert, as a practitioner, as a guide and a mentor to so many of us. He's one of the people who mentored me and has worked with me in this journey. So, Make sure you tune in from 11 o'clock with our very own uh, boss queen, who is uh, very interesting, very interesting questions that we'll, you'll actually hear about maize farming, How? what are the practices you need to do. One of the things that I'd like you to follow through the discussion is how many maize plants are in an acre and what soil structure is required for to, to succeed in maize farming. So tune in from 11, 11 a.m. right here on a farmer's media. Now, 
as I wind up, I know I've taken a bit longer than than uh, than I should have. As 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 we see what is happening, and something that is very critical is that you have to make sure that you adopt to climate smart agricultural practices. It is very important. You as a farmer, it is very important to make sure that you are understanding number one, what does what does it mean first of all? You know, what does it mean to what, what does climate smart agriculture mean? What does it mean to you as a farmer? Because if you don't understand what it means to you as a farmer, then number one, you will not know what to do right and what not to do right. If you don't know what to do right and you're doing agri- you're practicing agriculture, you'll get you'll, you'll suffer the worst things in your whole life, worse than what we suffered when we were starting out in farming. And this and, and this would mean things very very interesting things. You have to understand what does climate smart agriculture mean to you as a farmer, as an investor in your farm, to your soil, to the market, and to your livelihood. Why? Because it, it touches on all this. So these structures are very different. So these are things like soil health. And you cannot know soil health unless you test your soil. You cannot just keep on putting synthetic fertilizers however much that they are also required to add, because you also have, a, have to have a balanced diet. No, you also have to make sure that you're doing the right thing. And, and doing the right thing is simpler, better, cheaper at the end of it all. So if you would like to know more about what climate smart agriculture is, we will be sharing in the comment section in the next few minutes a whole 48 videos with different topics. So these are topics like what is climate smart agriculture, you know, what is soil management in terms of soil testing, soil conservation, you know, things like fertilizer and manure, the role of this. These are pests and diseases in in maize, pests and diseases, you know, in in uh, in other crops, you know, what does dairy farming look like? How can you be able to keep silage to, to prepare and store silage? You know, what harvesting, importance of drip irrigation. We have our colleague who actually had a very interesting show, which will also be doing a part two of it in what is drip irrigation? What does it do? How does it help you as a farmer? The importance of drip irrigation. One, one of the critical things that also about farming is the fact that uh, agroforestry plays a very important role. And today at three o'clock, we'll have a maiden, uh, we'll have a, a host who's making a maiden uh, show here who, talking about agroforestry. Things like we have heard about avocados, you know, mangoes and all that. But what does it look like in terms of climate smart agriculture? Another thing that will be very important when talking about climate smart agriculture, remember, it is also actually talking about agribusiness. Is things like budgeting, loans, financial inclusion, you know, things like insurance. We've had farmers complaining that oh, you know, there's no insurance for farmers. We will look at that in the course of this. So we are putting in the comment section. It's the AK TV, AKZ TV. African Knowledge Zone, which has been produced by Media Shamba Shepa for Sprout, that is Climate Smart Agricultural Content. Go there, let's meet, let's watch, let's see, let's ask as many questions as possible so that we continue learn, con- connecting, learning, and growing. Uh, so we want to do a final round of questions and uh, comments that are here. Uh, let us see. Uh, so we've answered that one. Let us see another one that is there right now. Uh, okay, let's see here. Okay, good, 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 good. So that's interesting here to see some of the comments. Yeah, good. Um, in relation to beans and bean business, selling fresh beans and dry beans, which one has good income and lowest cost of production? I think we can use pigeon peas to substitute garden beans in dry area. That's, that's a very good point, Patrick. Very good point, Patrick. Um, who we want to also celebrate as one of our anniversary followers here at A Farmer's Media. Remember, we will be having some giveaways to give you guys. June, July is our anniversary. When we started, we'll be telling you more about this tomorrow in our breakfast show. So, from my experience, we have two, two things. When it comes to bean farming, so we have the fresh beans, uh, things like French beans. 
we also have the normal beans that are planted and harvested green. But from my experience, French beans is good because of export. If you get a good buy, a good exporter who buys from you, or if you can export yourself, that is good business, good money, quick fix. However, it has slightly higher costs than the dry beans. Because the dry beans, you plant them. Make sure that you've prepared your soil uh, uh, healthy. Uh, we'll be talking about that uh, probably next week on how to prepare your farm for growing beans. Um, so what you do is that you, you plant the right variety. The only difference is this. You have to sow your seeds at the right time. Because if you don't, you'll miss out on the rains. So the beans are normally good if you plant them way before the rain starts. Then you prepare the land really well. Plant them in a very interesting way. Yesterday we were talking to a, one of our colleagues called Masi here uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the nursery. And uh, where she's propagating seedlings. Uh, is that when you are planting these seeds, you have to make sure that there's a part of the seed that goes up. So that the roots... And the root and the shoot come up at the same time instead of struggling where they go up round. So there's a way that you put the kitovu, the, that thing, that center of the, I'm forgetting what it's called, of the seed in the soil. But you put it in a, in a way that germination, when the seed germinates, the roots and the shoot come out faster. So that, in very simple terms, you get better germination rate and healthier crops. So Patrick, from my experience, planting dry beans is 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 very 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 economical. It is uh, it's, it's a lowest cost of production because it's basically the seed but pre land preparation. Uh, remember with the um, with the dry beans, you can just use the conservation agriculture, chop and drop, chop and drop the seed in the right way, fertilizer if need be, but not so much. You know, remember the beans are also uh, fixing itself. The pests and diseases that affect beans are not as many, uh, especially the, yeah, so rarely do you do a lot of spraying. Foliar fertilizer probably to uh, to, to, to make sure that the, the, what is it called, the flowers are, are coming out because the, the more healthy flowers you get, the more uh, beans that you harvest. Thank you very much for all those who have tuned in, who have been with us this morning. We apologize for having started a bit late, but we are back on air. We are excited, super excited to bring to you information for you in the industry to connect, learn, and grow. Adios. See you tomorrow at 7.30 in the morning. Have a brilliant day. Have you felt that the climate has been changing? Perhaps the dry season seems hotter, the rains are too late, or too early, too little, or don't come at all. You see more pests and diseases on your shamba. All of this can lead to less yields. By managing your water and soil, you can ensure that your shamba is still productive. This could be as simple as harvesting water from your roofs, investing in solar irrigation, and practicing conservation agriculture such as mulching, crop rotation, and minimum tillage. Trees are also a part of smart farming and can help you make your farm cooler, keep your soils intact and healthy. Planting fodder crops and turning grasses into hay or silage is another smart way of adapting. But be aware that even with smart farming, some things will remain out of your control. That's why it's a good idea to think about insurance, as this can cover you from these unforeseen events. Good soil and water management, along with planting trees and pest and disease control, can also help you increase your yields and income as the climate changes.
Conservation agriculture is a way of farming that keeps nutrients and moisture in your soil. It's also a good way of controlling pests and diseases. The three main principles are minimum tillage, mulching and crop rotation. With minimum tillage, you only disturb the soil where you will be planting. You can do this with a reaper or using a jembe. The second principle is called mulching. This means that you cover your soil with leftover residues such as leaves or maize stovers. This protects your soil from the hot sun while holding moisture in the ground. The mulch material will break down and add nutrients to your soil. Crop rotation is the third principle. You shouldn't plant the same crop on the same piece of land year after year. Instead, rotate between different crop families each season. If you follow these simple principles, you can be certain of healthier soil and higher yields in the long run.